Uh, yeah, my name is Martin Lavalley. Um, I am. Uh, thank you for inviting me to present about my R package. It is called Caper. Uh, it stands for Cohort Application Programming Pipeline. Actually, I don't remember the name, but it's Caper as for short, and it's essentially uh, a Hades tool that you can create cohort definitions in Atlas. So, back in. All right, so what, what is Caper? So usually when you create cohort definitions, you start by firing up Atlas. And Atlas is this beautiful uh, user interface that you can point and click and define your cohort definition, um, create these very complex uh, phenotypes that you can use for your analyses. So what Caper is trying to do is it's trying to provide a programmatic interface to what Atlas does. So on the right side is the R code definition of this equivalent cohort. And we can build the same cohort definition. And the key idea here is that the JSON generated from Atlas is the same as the JSON gener generated from Caper. So it uses this idea or what's called CERCB, which is this underlying mechanism that takes this JSON structure and compiles it and creates Odyssey SQL. And that's the SQL that you use to run against your database and generate these counts. So why would you use Caper? Because Atlas is this gorgeous tool. There's why would you want to use programmatic interface? So there's a couple of reasons, a couple of scenarios. So say say you're developing or developing a study and you have 50 different adverse drug reactions that you're interested in. So 50 different cohorts. Now you have three variations of these cohorts. So say you have the base variation, you only want to see them in inpatient visits, or you want to have some sort of demographic restriction uh, for the cohort definition. So this leads to 150 different cohort definitions. So you could make all 150 of these in Atlas and that would take you a lot of time, or you could use Caper to create a skeleton. Similar scenario two, you have say prostate cancer is your primary criteria. And then you have different variations of your inclusion rules. So say one variation is you're interested in prostate cancer patients that uh, have type two diabetes, another one where they have CKD or other different inclusion rules. And say you run your cohort diagnostics and it returns um, that you need to change a concept ID across these 10 different scenarios, scenarios but there's just one concept ID. So you have to go back and change each one of those in Atlas, and that can be pretty tedious at times. So what Caper uh, is trying to show is this, um, this idea of dry principle in programming. So you don't want to repeat yourself. You don't want to repeat the same task multiple, multiple times. It's easier to have just like one function and then iterate across that function because you're less prone to make mistakes. As you're doing the same point and click activity, you could could be at midnight and you could be tired and you make a mistake and then you mess up your cohorts. But using Caper, you have this possibility of functionalizing these things and, and creating multitude of cohorts based off of one skeleton. So I'll show you an example here. So here in Atlas, we have uh, say we wanted to create a cohort of anti-glycemic medications for patients with type 2 diabetes. But say we want to change this to different anti-glycemic medications. But we want to keep these pieces in place. So these inclusion rules is like this complex algorithm based off of eMERGE for type 2 diabetes, which has like five different pathways. So that's a really complicated piece that you don't want to recreate every single time. And then you also have this additional criteria of having no no instance of type 1 diabetes. So you could do a copy formula. So in this example, it's only five. It's not too bad, but think of extrapolate to these instances where you're doing this for 150 cohorts or several cohorts at a time. So instead using Caper, what you could do is create these functional templates. So what I have here is an example of a uh, cohort function that will create a skeleton of this cohort definition. And this will change based off of the drug that I want to put through this process. So then in my in my actual analysis script, I have my uh, my libraries, my connection details, and then my different drug concepts that standard drug concepts from OMOP. And then now I can iterate across these different drug concepts to create these five cohorts all at once. Another thing to notice is that um, I can do all these steps directly in R, so I can create my cohorts in R, I can generate them, and then I can go into different activities in, in R, so straight to cohort diagnostics, I can do feature extraction, I can do um, cohort method or patient level prediction. So if you prefer to just work in one interface, Caper allows you to work directly in R for your entire throughout the entire Odyssey uh, framework. So to give a little bit of a tutorial of how of these underlying pieces, as I mentioned before, 
Caper relies, and as does Atlas, relies on this idea of Circe B. And Circe B has these constructs that allow you to create these very complex cohort definitions. So the idea of Caper and what I tried to design it is to better illuminate these different constructs, such as a query, a count, and a group, to create these larger cohort definitions. And for each of these smaller con constructs, we can save these out and use them for another time. So usually we'll start by creating cohort concept set expressions. So this is essentially our code set uh, that we want to use and see if we have uh, hits for uh, if, a, if a person has had this type of medication in their history or a particular condition. And then we can use the, the make it into a concept set expression. So if we add uh, include descendants, now we start from these are ingredient standard ingredient drugs, and then we can add all of the branded names or generic names or however all, everything that descends from this from these this ingredient class. So once we have this code set, now we can run that against the different uh, domains that we have in the CDM. So if we think of the clinical tables in the CDM, we have drug exposure, measurement, procedure occurrence, condition occurrence. So what we're doing in a query is we're going to each of these tables and we're running our code set to see if we find hits in this code set. So that's the idea of a, of a query. So we've run this on drug exposure and see if we have anyone, any persons that have type two, have taken type two diabetes medications. We can also do this for say measurements. So say we're looking at H, HbA1c. So we want to see if there's a hit for if they've taken had this lab. Um, and then we can also filter that this by adding different attributes. So say we only want to see this lab for a value greater than 6.5%. So we can add attributes to our queries to add some sort of filtering to uh, the our base basic query. Next, we want to create counts. And the idea of a count is that this is like the temporal enumeration of whether someone is included or excluded from, from your cohort definition. So we want to add a timeline here relative to the index event. So say we want to count the number of type 2 diabetes medications, but we only want they only belong to the cohort if it takes place before the index event. So say the index here is they've taken or they've had some sort of lab result, right? So they've had the lab result. So if they've taken the medication any time before, then they're counted into the cohort. If they take it afterwards, they're not included into, into, that, into that enumeration. If we wanted to group these counts together, so say we have a variety of a variety of, oops, sorry. If we have a variety of these different counts and we want to put them into a single group, we can say we can use this concept and have if any of these counts occur, then they're included into the cohort. Or if we want to use pathways, so say all of these pieces of the of the type two diabetes pathway. So this is part of the eMERGE algorithm. So they have to have no uh, type two diagnosis, at least one medication, and at least one type of lab measure. So this can all be formulated into a group, which makes this really really complex uh, piece of the JSON expression that goes into the cohort definition. Now we wanted to put these all together. We can create inclusion rules. And what Caper allows you to do is you can save these cohort, these these components uh, to be repurposed for different uh, for different cohort definitions, either to be used later in your script or in a different type of analysis if we wanted to use this uh, VKB type two diabetes case. And of course, we can put all these pieces together so then we can see the high level pieces like primary criteria, additional criteria, inclusion rules, and create our cohort definition and then build our JSON um, structure. So Caper also allows you to go in the other direction. So say we start with a JSON um, uh, object or a JSON file. So say we have this uh, antiglycemic cohort for SGLT2, and we're going to read this into R. And then say we want to, instead of having this antiglycemic class, we want to try a different one. So we're going to create our concept set expression. We're going to build a new primary criteria, and then we're just going to replace the primary criteria with our different drug class to create this brand new cohort. So Caper allows you to work in both directions. So starting in R to build out the entire cohort, or you can start, create a skeleton in Atlas, import the JSON and edit that into Caper. So a lot of times what we've done in projects is uh, like I will build the cohorts using Caper and then a secondary person on, on the study team will review the cohorts in Atlas to see like, all right, we got to make this change or make that change in order to improve the cohort definition. So Caper allows, because of this programmatic interface, it allows us to kind of build several cohorts um, at a time and so we can, uh, for our, our, our studies. So uh, that's all, 
that I have right now. So there's a lot more to explore with Caper. So I encourage you to go to the GitHub link, which is here. And um, when Craig uh, posts the different presentations, you can follow that link. So you can explore the package and then provide any feedback in terms of as, as an issue. So I'm more than happy to hear what everyone has to say. So I will stop there.